Hey, subbies! Welcome to stream. I am back after what feels like forever. I don't even know how long. Maybe two weeks. Maybe week and a half. I, I don't know. Um, time has kind of melded together for me at this point as far as how long it's been since I streamed, so I really don't know uh, when the last time I streamed was. But um, for those of you who were sort of here before I went offline, um, it was my two year anniversary recently and I had planned a small event to do um, for that and then literally everything went wrong. Um, so yeah, that happens to me a lot. Um, that said, we are here. And I have my computer back, and I am able to stream again. So there's that. All right. So I'm just, I'm just gonna tell the story for those of you who don't know. I'm sure there's probably people wondering where I've been. I got a lot of different comments on Twitter from a couple of people um, talking about, you know, uh, talking about their patience and things like that. And um, I really do appreciate everybody who was patient enough to wait for me. Um, to get my computer back and not forget about me or anything like that. Uh, believe me, I was extremely stressed during that entire fiasco. So what happened was um, my last stream was on YouTube. And for those of you who remember what was happening around that time, I was waiting for my graphics card to come and it did arrive. Me being the person who is not computer literate thought he had everything he needed to make that graphics card work. As it turned out, when I tried to install said graphics card my own on my by myself, I quickly found I don't have the case for that graphics card. In fact, that graphics card is pretty long compared to the case that I have, uh, which was kind of surprising because I didn't think the case I had was very small, but it was apparently too small to hold the graphics card. So. I had to figure out something to do, and the thing that I did was Mel suggested to go in and see if they can help me get a new case, so I booked an appointment. The appointment I booked was a diagnostic appointment, which me thinking, you know, diagnostic appointment would lead into just getting the computer fixed, I thought that made sense. So I booked a diagnostic appointment online, and I went to the computer store with my computer and my graphics card. Waited for about an hour, hour and a half for the guy to finally look at my uh, look at my computer. In which case, we discovered not only would I need a new graphic, sorry, not only would I need a new case, I would also need a new power supply. Because as you know, if you are computer oriented or if you know anything about computers, graphics cards uh, depend on power supply voltage, and mine was too low for what I had bought. So. At this point, I had to get a new case, and I had to get a new power supply. So I went around with the guy, and he helped me pick out the case, he helped me pick out the power supply, and uh, he gave me an external drive because he said these new cases had um, less drive base space. So I have like six drives on this computer, don't ask me why, I don't know. Um, and I told him I really wanted to keep most of those because most of those are you know, old stuff. I probably don't need, but I want to have. Um, so we got the power supply, we got the external drive, we went up front, we're talking about all the stuff that needs to be done. As it turns out, the things that I looked at online were wrong. I went into the computer store thinking it would cost $50 to slot in my graphics card. It actually ended up being an entire ordeal. So what they have to do when they um, replace the case on a computer is called recasing it. And that's basically rebuilding the computer from scratch. So um, I had to get that put in. They told me it would be done on Tuesday. This was the Tuesday of last week. Or actually, no, I think it was Tuesday of this past week, like the, this past Tuesday. Anyway. So, uh, they said it would be done on Tuesday. Um, I screamed internally because 
I was supposed to do my stream that Saturday. And I quickly realized I would have to push it back. Well, as I was leaving the computer store, I thought about it and I was like, this isn't too bad. I mean, being frank with everything that was going on on Twitter, everything that was happening to me personally, I felt like a break was needed. So I left the computer store, felt feeling kind of bad, but feeling kind of okay. Um, because I figured, you know, maybe, um, maybe I, a break would be good for me. So I bought Live Alive um, to play, and uh, I spent some time catching up on some shows. And the entire time I was without a computer, my thought was they were working on it. That the computer would be done on Tuesday, that I'd be able to have enough time to plan my stream for Sunday, and everything would be fine. So um, Tuesday comes around. Haven't heard anything about the computer. I'm at work, which is a little bit closer to the computer store than it would be to drive from home. Uh, work guts out. I start to go home and I realize I still haven't heard anything about my computer. I call them before I leave about five or seven times. Sorry, not five or seven times. I call them before I leave. The phone rings about five or seven times on the line. Nobody answers. Not a good sign. So I drive up there and it's about an hour drive. I get up to the front desk. The guy at the front desk tells me the dude who was supposed to fix my computer did not come in today. All right. So I asked them, I say, when do you think it'll be fixed? And they tell me that they think it'll be fixed Wednesday morning. All right, that's fine. Um, I'm a little bit perturbed because I can't really pick it up uh, until after work, but at least I'll have it. And there's still several days before the event, so I can plan it properly. Okay, so I go home, um, hoping for that call tomorrow. Wednesday comes around, work day's almost over, no text message, no call. So I get on the phone with them again. This time the phone rings 15 times. No answer. Um, this time I try again. 16 times. No answer. So I... Sorry, I'm having trouble remembering the story at this point because... Okay, I think what happened was Yes, okay, I remember now. So, on Wednesday, as you may have known, as, as you may have known, because um, I posted about it on Twitter, something exploded near my work. So I got sent home early. Um, and the whole time I'm sitting here working from home, I am concerned about my computer, so I'm trying to call them. I finally get a hold of somebody who works in Dallas. The Dallas person, said that they would send an email over to the office that I was working with to inquire about the status of my computer. Me thinking that this meant that maybe I'll finally get an answer said, okay, cool. And I figured the email was sent. So work finally ends on Wednesday um, and I still don't hear anything back. So I try calling them again, 16 rings. And I realize once again, <laughs> I have been bamboozled. So. Um, so, I drive up there again, it's about an hour drive, um, I meet the manager, the manager apologizes, uh, he says the guy who was supposed to repair my computer is kind of bogged down on a lot of other projects, which I can appreciate being a CSR myself, but I also kind of hate because, like, he could have told me that and could have tempered my expectations so that they weren't realistic and thinking that this computer would be done on Tuesday when it was actually not done until Wednesday. He told me that they could get it done within an hour and a half. All right, I'm already there. Not really much I can do about that. So I drive around, wasting time. I get a tea at a place that was two minutes to closing. 
finally it's time to go back and the computer is finally done excellent so i take the computer put it in the car drive home when i got home i was too tired to work with it so it sat in my room um thursday i believe is when i finally got around to hooking it up getting everything working everything worked mostly okay uh there were some there are some small things about this computer like it doesn't have as much drive space on it in terms of usb drives uh, USB ports, sorry. It doesn't have any more, as many USB ports, so I needed to buy external USB, like, hub, um, which I got yesterday. Um, but everything else works fine. I did several play tests. Um, I did several just trying to test bandwidth connection, stuff like that. Um, the computer runs way better than it used to. For those of you who don't know, I used to have a 1060 graphics card. I now have a 4070 Ti. It's a pretty big upgrade. Um, I tested Fortnite. I tested Resident Evil 4. I tested Satisfactory. I tested Dead Cells. Um, I wanted to test Valheim because Valheim felt like the ultimate test since it was chugging so much on my computer every time I streamed it. Valheim wouldn't open, so I just uninstalled Valheim. Um, and I tested Craftopia. Everything I tested worked fine. I had no issues whatsoever with this computer during testing. That is to say, if there are issues with this computer during stream, I am convinced I am cursed. Because everything that I tested worked fine. I never had any issues whatsoever. Unfortunately, um, because I got it back on Wednesday and I only set it up on Thursday, that left only a couple of days left to prepare for the event. And as you might know, on Friday, I nearly had a nervous breakdown um, because I realized I didn't know what to do. I had an idea for this event on Sunday, last Sunday, um, when I was waiting for my computer to be repaired. I had everything envisioned. Maybe it's because I didn't write it down. I don't know. Maybe it's because everything took so much time. Maybe it's because after I got my computer back, I was just too drained to focus on it. Whatever it was, I completely forgot what I wanted to do. And I spent a lot of the night worrying about it. And I finally got up and I did some work and I felt a little bit better. And then Saturday, um, I had a trip with my coworker planned, which by the way, um, if you didn't know, the reason why things have been so weird for me in terms of scheduling and stuff, my coworker has been here and we've been doing stuff out of work because I'm kind of trying to show him the area. And his stay has been extended by two weeks. So things are going to be quite weird for two more weeks. As far as weekends go. Um, we planned to go visit uh, the Space Center, which we did. It was a lot of fun. Um... But we didn't get out of there until 3. And then I wanted to show him a couple of sites around the area. I have this thing, if you know me, where I really like to drive. I also have this thing, if you know me, where I get very carried away with whatever I'm doing. So what turned out to be a trip that was only supposed to take about 3-4 hours ended up me being back at home at 9 o'clock p.m. And I used pretty much the rest of the night to work on this event. <sighs> so, that brings us to today. Um, I finished what I was working on. I updated some things and did some work for some other stuff. We did not finish everything we planned to do. Um, so, like I said... Uh, I have what I have. This event is probably not going to be the scale that I wanted it to be, but that's okay. Um, I am excited to present what I do have, and I hope that you're excited to, uh, to look at it with me and take it in. Um, but that said, that's my story. That's what happened. That's why I haven't been available. So, for those of you who were very patient waiting for me, I really appreciate it. Um, it sucked to be without a computer for a while, 
Uh, but, like I said, I feel like I, it was something I also needed, so um, there is that. So, yeah. <clears throat> Thank you. I am also happy that I'm back. Um, I'm going to try as hard as possible to keep a normal schedule. I don't know if that will be doable because of all the things happening. There is a possibility that things like Saturdays and Sundays will be needed for coworker activities until my coworker goes back to Columbia. But other than that, um, we're going to try our best to keep to what we know. Uh, I mentioned I had a surprise. I did. I, I really did. Uh, for two days, I really wanted. There was something I really wanted to do. Um, it was kind of the. It was kind of the carrot I used for me to complete my work. It didn't work. Um, and we weren't able to do it. So, sorry. Um, maybe we'll be able to do it after this stream. Maybe I'll do it on Monday instead. I don't know. I don't really want to say what it is because I wanted it to be a surprise and I wanted it to be something fun. I'm sure most of you can guess what it is. There's like one big thing that happened this week that everybody has just been screaming about. I'm sure you know what it is. Um, but I wanted it to be a surprise and I dropped that ball, and that's my fault. I'm sorry. That said, let's move on um, and get started. So part of this event, I wanted to be a celebration for my two years in streaming, and also I wanted to introduce myself again to people that don't know me very well. A lot of the people who are regulars to my stream right now are not the same people who came around um, when I did my debut two years ago. And that's okay, it happens. Um, when I debuted, I, I did not envision that my experience as a VTuber would be what it is, and I also didn't see myself exiting the VTuber community as quickly as I did. So that is what it is. Um, a lot of this information on this presentation is stuff that we talked about two years ago. But I've taken a lot of it and I've rewritten it because I didn't really know what I wanted to be two years ago, and I do now. So I hope that you can appreciate that um, some of this information is probably old, but it's told differently and it might be changed. There are definitely a lot of things that I presented two years ago that I thought would be what I was about, and then everything changed over the course of what I dealt with and people I met and things like that. So. That is just kind of the path of the content creator. That said, we're going to start our presentation now, so I hope you enjoy it. I worked very hard on it. <clears throat> All right, subbies, it is time for our two year anniversary celebration. So here we go. You can hear the music, I can't. Um, if it's too loud, please let me know. Um, and I will turn it down. Why is it not working? All right, so first things first, about me. Um, all right, so first of all, I just wanna make this clear. Some people are confused by it. When I say about me, what I actually mean is about my avatar, Dominic, the character that you see on the screen. Um, when I first debuted two years ago, I thought the correct way to be a VTuber was to be your character. That is not correct. Um, there are many different ways to be a VTuber. Being a character is only one of them. I quickly realized that being Dominic rather than being myself and using Dom as an avatar was a lot harder than I thought. And it was basically like role playing and I hated it. So that's to say, um, Dom is my avatar. He is my representation. He is what I have chosen to use as my way of interacting with my audience. But Dom is not me. He is a character. He is an OC. I created him. <sighs> what? Uh, probably 13 years ago by this point. Yeah, 13 years ago by this point, he's evolved over time. His personality is exactly the same as mine, but he's a character. 
and I want people to understand that because I get a lot of people not really understanding if I am my character or if my character is just an OC. He is an OC. All right. So that said, his name is Dominic Wolf, and he goes by Dommy. Other nicknames include Dom, Dommy, Dommy with an IE, Doggy, Puppy, Mutt Boy, and more if you get to know me better. Um, Dom's age is 21 years old. Um, Dom is a male. He is a dog boy, otherwise known as a canid. Um, he is a Doberman Pinscher purebred. He is not a cat. He is not a wolf. He is not a fox. He is a dog. Doberman. He's a Doberman. That's why I have Doberman in my Twitter name, because that's his dog breed. <clears throat> his body type is athletic. He has six-pack firm abs and toned biceps. His, soldiers are, uh, his shoulders are kind of broad, but not really terribly broad. Uh, his thighs are a little on the thick side, and he has a long flowing tail, which kind of resembles a wolf's. I'm going to be clear here. Yes, there are parts of Dom that represent uh, a wolf's biology. There's a reason for that in his lore, but he himself is a dog. He's not a wolf. I know that might be confusing. Maybe that's where like the wolf stuff came from, but no, wolf is a... It's a play on words. Dominic Wolf is a... It's a pun. Uh, when I first created Dom 13 years ago, um, I had a really hard time naming characters just because I suck at naming things. And I like to have names in pun form because I really like Phoenix Wright. So Dominic Wolf is a play on submissive puppy. And there you go. <clears throat> Dom loves showing off the upper core of his body and the most powerful part of his body is his legs. And he can really kick if you make him angry. Dom's height is five foot four. He is five foot six inches in boots and he doesn't have a height complex. Neither do I. <clears throat> Occupation. Dom is a mercenary contracted with the Canis Vanguard Charter. Um, he is also a professional dominant submissive for the Princess Room, and he's independent. And he is the puppy play specialist for Wolf Magazine, as well as a leather and latex model. This is where a lot of his outfits come from. This is where a lot of my commissions come from. Uh, a lot of what created Dom's lore and backstory came from Final Fantasy XIV, so some of this information is like transplanted from that canon into a new universe. That just happens because that's how his character was developed. Uh, something happened, I'm sorry. I will be right back. So here it is. This is our new scene. Um... This isn't everything. There's some other stuff that we couldn't get to work right. So just an FYI on that. Um, but the way that this is designed and set up is so that I can re uh, resize it, um, depending on whatever we're doing at the time. So like if we're playing a JRPG or something that needs more attention, um, we can expand the screen like so. And if we're playing something that doesn't require so much attention, we can lower, we can lessen it. All right. Okay. Moving on. Where was I? Um. Okay. Uh. Right. Yes. I am also. Uh, Dom's also a performer and creator on Only Wands, a pornographic website made by canids for canids. And his residence is Canis City. Uh, Canis is the um the world that I created for Dom in his canon. Uh, it is also the world where to make an alpha takes place, and we will talk about that later. Hell. Is it? It didn't. Fuck. All right, hold on. I got to figure out why it's not working. Shit, I'm not supposed to stretch it. Um... That. I don't know. I think that's right. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, okay. So um, my go live tag is Wolf Tubing. My uh, safe for work art tag is hashtag Domicoms. 
my not safe for work art tag is slash tag Dommy comes and I do encourage fan art and things of that nature. I always like to see um, when uh, people who watch me are just be there we go. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, where was I? Yes. Um, I encourage fan art. So if you want to do fan art of me, um, all I ask is that you use the hashtag so that I can find it. Or that so that other people can find it um that would really help especially with twitter uh my viewer names are subbies you're all my subbies and subby stands for uh submissive insert identity here ease you can be a submissive puppy you can be a submissive bunny you can be a submissive foxy it, it doesn't matter um be whatever you want to be but know that regardless of what you are you are my subby uh, my channel theme is a dungeon primarily inspired by BDSM related themes and ideas. Uh, most of the chatting screens you'll see will either be in my dungeon, my living room, or my bedroom. Um, some of my themes include le uh, chains, leather, latex, straps, zippers, whips, paddles, lace, and rope. There are strong puppy play elements throughout, including collars, leashes, paw prints, spikes, and studs. So if you ever are interested in, uh, if you're ever interested in like drawing anything uh, involving me, um, those are my aesthetics. All of those things are usually totally fair game and totally fit Dom. Hi Rika, welcome. Thank you so much for the happy two years. And thank you Riku for the resub earlier. Um, I think it was 32 months. Congrats on your 32 months of being a dog boy simp. Hey Mare, welcome. Thank you so much for the two years. Uh, I don't know. I don't know where I was going. I'm I'm so sorry. Like I said, this is I'm really struggling right now. <laughs> um, I'm doing my best, but this is not. I am not where I usually am with streams. I'm so sorry. Uh, let's continue. Um, as a Doberman dominant, a lot of my flavoring will cater to the dominant side of Dom's personality. But please remember, Dom is a switch. Don't get too carried away. Um. I want to re-emphasize that last part. Dom is a switch, not a sub, and not a dom. He is a switch. Meaning you're going to see a lot of dominant things, and you're going to see a lot of sub things. Please do not classify my character as one or the other. <clears throat> My vibes are dark and sexy, as well as comfy and consensual. You'll see alternating fancy themes or grunge-like aesthetics. A lot of neon backlighting accents glows will be present, uh, present throughout my designs. Uh, you can mainly see that on the just chatting screen, but you can see it um, quite a bit in other places too. I have some graphics that didn't work that um, we got to get fixed, but those sort of emphasize that point. Uh, I mainly stream JRPGs. I took that out. I took that out. I don't know why it's still there. I will retract what I just said. I stream a lot of turn-based RPGs. Trying to get away from the phrase of JRPGs because it's offensive. Occasionally, I will also stream horror games and visual novels depending on interest. I'm really fond of mysteries, but I also love a good adventure too. I swear I took that out. Let's... All right, uh, let's talk about my hobbies and interests. So, um, my favorite video games, I'm really fond of turn-based RPGs, and they'll be the bulk of the focus on my channel. Um, we are currently playing Trails from Zero, Chained to Echoes, Chrono Cross, and I've played a whole bunch of other turn-based RPGs in the past. Uh, my favorite RPG is Hajimari no Kiseki, which is coming stateside this year as Trails into Reverie. Um, other favorites of mine include Umineko no Nakakoroni, uh, Trails of Cold Steel 4, Control, Devil May Cry 5, Zero Escape, I, The Somnium Files, and more. Uh, some of you have asked a lot about my favorite kinds of music. Um, my favorite kinds of music are metal, metalcore, video game music, alternative rock. Um, but honestly, just about anything hot and heavy will get me pretty excited and motivate me. Um, for my favorite kinds of food, this has changed. Um, I used to really like Asian food, and I'm really fond of chicken, but as of late, uh, my body has decided it hates me. 
which is a thing that happens when you get older. And when you get to your 30s especially, that's typically the, the thing that comes next. Uh, so as a result of that, I have had to change a vast majority of my dietary habits. Um, and I have had to go completely gluten-free. Which is to say, I don't know if being gluten-free is solving anything for me or not, but it is the thing that I'm trying right now. Uh, so a lot of my dietary habits have changed. Um, I used to really like eating out, and recently eating is terrifying. So, yeah. But most of the time, uh, Asian food is my favorite kind of food, if I can eat it. So, yeah. Hi Eclipse, welcome. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, I also love to write. Um, many of my writings are featured on my AO3 or inside my Discord server, and most of them focus on BDSM relationships, typically depicting two male-presenting individuals, or male-presenting and female-presenting individual. Um, I'm really fond of fetish writing. I also use these writings to script my audios, too. Uh, I write all of my own scripts, except for the times when I use the scripts from like Twitter and stuff like that. Otherwise, they are mostly all my own scripts. Thank you. I appreciate that. I see that you're watching without audio, but thank you. Um, can... You can enable that uh, because you're watching with audio. It might it might help you um, follow along even if you can't listen. Where was I? All right, we finished. All right, let's move. All right. So here's some of my... Oh, fuck me. All right, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. That's weird. It says you're not. What the heck? Okay, well, I'm glad that you're watching with audio then. I don't know why Twitch is telling me you're not. That is very weird. Yeah, I don't either. Okay, I'm sorry. Hold on, I need to trim this. Now I should not have to change anything else. All right. Uh, so these are some of my outfits. As you can see, one is censored. I can't show that one on Twitch. Um, these are some of my seasonal outfits. So firstly, we have Summer Dami. I used this during my summer event this past year. Um, some of you might remember that. I don't remember what I played, but there was a summer event. Um, then we have Spring Bunny Dami. Um, I used this outfit uh, during a couple of my streams, uh, mainly on Joystick, not so much on Twitch because it's not really Twitch appropriate. Uh, and if we do use it on Twitch, we have to focus on a very specific part of the body, otherwise we will get TS TOS into hell. Um, then I have Winter Reindeer Dommy, which some of you have seen during the winter. And then I have my Fall Hoodie, which is a fan favorite. Um, for those of you who are new to the channel, uh, during the fall, we asked whether or not we wanted the Halloween outfit redone or the fall outfit redone. And you guys really wanted the fall outfit redone, so we created that one. Um, the Halloween one will hopefully come soon. All right, here are some of my other outfits. These are more occasional outfits. So first of all, we have the leather biker outfit, which I used for Valentine's Day, and I used for some other streams too. Then we have the Hardcore Play outfit, which is my default outfit, the one you're looking at right now. It is the outfit I got for my birthday. Cozy hoodie, except it's totally exposed at the back. Yeah, I didn't show backs this time. Um, I, I just wanted, I just figured it'd be easier to show fronts. So I'm sorry. Then we have the Submissive Puppy outfit, which is uh, a latex bodysuit that I use for streams involving water. Or just for Donathon streams. Um, I've used this for more than a couple of Donathons between Mel and myself. Um, and I've also used it for Subnautica and Raft. Uh, I think it really fits streams that involve water or water sports, as it were. So, you know. Uh, then we have my Mercenary Boy outfit. This is an outfit that I used as my old default. Um, it was the second outfit we remade uh, when Mel um, changed Dom's textures and upgraded his model. Uh, I still use it from time to time. It mostly fits things like adventure games or like Monster Hunter, stuff like that. Um, and then we have the latex leotard outfit. Uh, this one, I mostly used it for 
I didn't really use this for any particular kind of game. I mostly used this because I liked it. Um, it's still an outfit I use sometimes because I like it. So it's got a nice vibe to it. Now we have Red Dommy's outfits. So this is Red Dommy's default outfit. Uh, we have a couple of different versions. We have a vest with no pants. We have a full suit. We have a jacket with no pants. And we have pants with no jacket. This outfit is fully customizable. Um, I can take off the vest. I can take off the jacket. I can take off the. I can take off the pants. Um, and create a couple of different looks. And that's something that uh, we got recently. Mel and I worked on this uh, during the winter break while I was over in Canada. And uh, this was used um, for our. Uh, our first Dog Boy Sunday stream during the new year. Um, this is used every Sunday during Dog Boy Sunday, which we will talk about later during the presentation. Uh, so if you like this outfit, I hope that you'll come out and see it on Sundays. Love how this Dom has a no pants option. Yes. Uh, and this is our most recent Red Dommy outfit. This is Chrono Cross Dommy, which is stylized after the character Nikki in Chrono Cross. Um, with, uh, which we have been playing for Dog Boy Sunday. Um, for those of you who don't know, Dog Boy Sunday is an event that I do with my partner, uh, Turtle, and, uh, we choose different games to play. Right now we've been focusing on JRPGs. Um, so we'll talk more about that later, but this is our most recent, uh, foray into that. As you can see, there is one version that has a guitar and one that does not. All right, now we're going to talk about some of my likes and dislikes. Uh, I like, Dommy likes bones, musky scents, chicken, sweating, cute submissives, leather, latex, chains, head pats, pets, ear rubs, stomach rubs, armpit rubs, ab and stomach rubs, and oranges. Uh, just in case you didn't know, oranges are Dom's favorite fruit. Uh, I, I, I also quite like oranges, but Dom is like hardcore obsessed with oranges. Thank you for the pets. Oh, I forgot the chicken. Yeah, chicken is a big one. It's on. It should be on there. I forgot it. I can't believe I fucked that up. Oh, well. <sighs> Moving on. Um, Dommy dislikes seaweed, sea smells, seafood, pushy pe- Oh, I did. I did put chicken. You're right. Yes. Chicken is there. Thank you. Okay. Um, pushy people, abusive people, dishonesty, disloyalty, bad submissives, bad brats, abusive dominance, fake dominance, animal abusers, fake people, people who don't know the differences between sub or bottom, and unnecessary callouts. I don't like to be put into drama. Um, drama being... So-and-so was mean to me during a collab. Totally valid to talk about, but please keep it in your circle. Do not DM me expecting me to cancel somebody because of it or block them for it. Uh, now, mind you, there are a ton of assholes in the streaming community, particularly in the VTubing community, and that should be noted. However, I definitely feel like certain things belong in private as opposed to in public. <clears throat> Alright, now we're going to talk about our battle statistics. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Dom, as a character, is fairly battle-oriented. Um, he is a mercenary, so a lot of his jobs involve fighting or smacking people or sometimes even harming people. Uh, so we're going to talk a little bit about that now. Dom's main weapon is a greatsword. It goes by the name of a Vanguard Blade, and he has an SS Plus rating with it. His sub-weapon is his fists. He's actually really good at fist fighting. A+. Plus. He can also use a longsword or a katana that goes by the name of Thirst Seeker. That is a carryover from his Final Fantasy XIV canon. Um, some of the other weapons he uses are axes, which he's a C plus with. Pistols, rifles, and other guns. I misspelled rifles, and nobody told me I misspelled rifles. I love the fact that I did this the way I did it. Um, 
That's supposed to say rifles, not riles. Uh, and other guns, C minus, F on FPS games. Bows are an F, ranged weapons are a D. Dom cannot use magic, and he is afraid of it. Staves are a C minus. Fangs are a B plus, mostly used sexually. Claws are an A plus, mostly used sexually. And whips are an A plus, sometimes S, mostly used during his profession. Uh, mostly, Dom prefers to subdue people using his body strength. This involves wrestling, grappling, headlocks, neck grabs, choking, and more. He's not beyond giving a sub a quick cup check to put them in line. That's kind of a character thing. He also pulls tails and loves to pull hair. <clears throat> I didn't even notice myself. Neither did I. But I definitely meant to type rif rif uh, rifles. All right. Let's talk about some of the emotional characteristics associated with uh, both my and Dom's personalities. Uh, I'm going to be referring to myself mostly here, so if it gets kind of confusing, it's okay, but please remember Dom is an OC. I am who I am. Uh, generally speaking, I'm pretty incapable of betraying my feelings. I wear most stuff on my sleeve, so if I'm bothered by something, chances are it'll show. Uh, I typically talk about these subjects in my stream a lot, but I can go on tangents or get carried away, so please be worried of this. Uh, I'm pretty stoic and easygoing most of the time. I don't get startled very easily unless I'm playing horror games, and I'm usually pretty quick to regain my demeanor after I do. I have a hard time crying most of the time. Not incapable, it just takes a lot. Uh, I'm extremely patient. I tend to take my time with games because I like to do everything if I can and within reason, so I hope you can be patient with me. One example of this is in most RPGs, I like to do everything I can. If there's a side quest, chances are I am probably going to do it unless I don't like it, in which case I won't. Um, so just bear that in mind when you are watching my streams. If you're not the type of person that enjoys um, watching everyone, sorry, watching somebody do like everything in a game, uh, you may not like the way I approach JRPGs. I don't, I'm not really a completionist. My thing is, I just like to experience things if I'm given the opportunity to experience it. However, there are some games that make things way too hard to experience, like, uh, boss battles that are extra bosses and things like that. And I sometimes won't do those just because they're too difficult. I try very hard not to belabor the point when it comes to streams. Um, one of my biggest pet peeves is getting on stream trying to do something and letting that be the focus of streams like several streams in a row because i just i i feel like my anxiety kicks in then and i worry that it's boring or i worry that somebody else thinks it's boring and i have a certain anxiety about playing games off stream myself so yeah it'll be within reason sometimes we'll do it sometimes we won't it'll just depend uh, I really like playing games with friends, so I'll do random multi-streams and collabs at times. It makes me very happy to be invited to play something with someone, as long as they are a friend. If you are a person I do not know and you want to invite me to do a collab, please do not DM me to ask for a collab. I will tell you no. Um, instead, please send me an email at dommywolf at gmail.com to discuss your collab idea. The reason for this is because I've been traumatized out of doing random collabs. They have become terrifying for me, and I do not want to do them anymore. So if you are very interested in collabing with me, have an idea, and you want to pitch it, I am more than happy to talk about it in a professional capacity through email. My biggest... Uh... My biggest initiative as a streamer is to make sure everyone watching me or interacting with me has a good time. Sometimes I don't do very well at this, but I'm always receptive to feedback. Um, you can give me feedback literally at any point in time. Ever. Just If you're watching a stream and it ends and you want to tell me if it went good or bad, you are more than welcome to tell me that. I do not mind. Um, I would say please try and make your feedback useful. like. Saying something like that stream sucked is not helpful and will probably make me block you. Um, but if you say something like, hey Dom, I noticed you discussed this subject during the stream. I feel like you could have done that a little bit more sensitively or like you could have been a little more sensitive to this or that. That's a different story. I can take that information and run with it. 
And I appreciate when people give me feedback because sometimes on streams I don't really know how things come out until I rewatch the stream to make a VOD or something. And then it's pretty much too late. So. Was that cat screaming? Cat? Cat? There's no screaming cats. Max isn't in here. I think you're hearing things, Evie. <laughs> okay. Imagine just finishing a stream and someone DMs you, that stream sucked. No, that... <sighs> it hasn't happened to me, but it has happened to people I know. It's a thing. You may not think it's a thing, it is... It's a thing. Alright. Personality characteristics. How would someone describe me? Uh... Some descriptions of myself are brash, lewd, pretty free of any kind of mental filter. I tend to say things that are on my mind in whatever way I please without caring too much about how they make me look or what people think. Um, most of the time, this takes the form of unfiltered horny posting. I am very open about my kinks and fetishes, so just an FYI, and that is something that's just characteristic of my channel. Um, you can watch me play Subnautica and I will literally talk about water sports for about 25 minutes. Uh, I'm sorry for the way that I am. <clears throat> if I'll eat someone's legs if they do that, it's happened to me before, but it was also a literal child that stopped me for a bit. Terrifying. Hate it. That's awful. Oh my god. Yeah, some people just have zero manners. I had a stream yesterday, but music and game was too loud, but nobody in chat pointed that out. That you, That's just normal. That is just streaming. I have had streams like that, too, <laughs> where I've gone two hours and everything is too loud and nobody has said a word. That's just something that happens with streaming. Sometimes people just don't like to point things out because of anxiety, and that's okay. Um, but it does make things a little bit harder for the streamer. Uh, my lewdness can be pretty wild, but I keep it clean for the most part on streams. I still crack lewd jokes here and there, or curse, or make lots of references to being fucked publicly by insert thing here. But if for anything else, you'll have to visit my Twitter, Fansly Joystick, or our community Discord. I'm also really, 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 really kinky. Like, super kinky. It's not uncommon for me to see a character on screen and talk about how hard I simp for them. I love kink and BDSM, and I have such a strong passion for kink positivity. You really not see me be tasteless on stream? Within reason. I will absolutely be tasteless about Leon or Cloud Strife. Sorry about it. But I'll absolutely be free and open about various sexual and kinky remarks, so please bear that in mind while watching. This also shows up in much of my branding. If male etchy or nudity makes you uncomfortable, please keep in mind that it is still my right to display Dom how I please and respect that. I will never do anything to force discomfort on you. The reason why I put that last line in is because there's a lot of people who have come into my stream and said that my outfit is too revealing or that I should cover up my titties. No, I will not. This is my stream, and if you're uncomfortable with male nudity, I totally get it. But you do not have to support me if you don't want to. This is a kink-positive, fetish-positive space, and I will have my titties out as much as I please. <clears throat> Cover them up, slut. <laughs> exactly. Not our problem. Dom's only for cool people. Exactly. All right, more things. Uh, are you extroverted or introverted? I and Dom are both big introverts. Kind of hard to believe with Dom's abs. I wouldn't exactly call myself shy, but I am socially oblivious, and I tend to do most things without recognizing social conventions. For Dom, this takes the form of being half-naked almost 100% of the time, usually to a fault of not recognizing it. Sometimes, however, this can be intentional. Dom is a very flirty and very homoerotic, dis and very homoerotic despite being a STEMI, so please bear that in mind. Just because I'm socially awkward doesn't mean I can't be sexual, too. We've gotten a lot of comments from people, etc., and so on, um, who talk about how my character can't be a certain way if all I like to do is get loot art, and that is a myth. And there is no such thing as being one way or another. You can be two different things at once. Uh, you can have a wholesome personality and still like to get art of your character getting gangbanged. Believe it or not, it's the truth. And that's just how it is. 
How talkative are you? Since my debut in 2021, I have made it my biggest goal to be more vocal and talkative on stream. Generally speaking, I like to fill dead air. But I got a lot of bad advice starting out, and sometimes that just becomes me talking about whatever comes to mind. That said, I love keeping an eye on conversations in chat and talking with chat and helping them uh, engage more with my content. If I know something about a game or series, I also love to give backstory or lore or talk about the narrative in a more abstract, synthetic way. Case in point, if you've ever watched me done a Kiseki stream, you've probably heard me go on for about 30 minutes about some stupid fucking plot point that doesn't mean anything to anyone, and I will continue to do it because that's my right as a person. <clears throat> no, for turn-based games, I may be more reactionary unless I played it before. That's just because turn-based games require a lot of thought, and the, uh, when I'm playing an RPG, I may not be as talkative as I normally am in something like Elden Ring. Um, and the reason for that is not because I'm not enjoying the game, it's not because I'm not enjoying the stream, it's just because it's really hard to come up with commentary for a game that's text-based. Because most of it is just reacting to the text. Whereas in something like Elden Ring, it's less text-based and more about what I'm doing. So, you know, your experience will vary depending on what game I'm playing. Just want to make that clear. Um, I also love to scream. For literally any reason at all. Just any at any time. Just for any reason. So, just an FYI. Didn't used to do it, but I do it now. <clears throat> Hi, Fugnu. Welcome. I am a very big streamer, both in and out of loot activities. Trust me. <clears throat> all right. Now we get into sexual characteristics. I didn't do this when I debuted in 2021. I am going to do it now. This is a content warning. This section will discuss my kinks and interests in a lot of detail. So if sexual content makes you uncomfortable, please be warned. I'm not asking you to leave the stream. I am just asking you if you do not feel comfortable talking about sexual content. Um, just maybe put it aside or mute it. Um, probably for about 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, all right, that said, let's continue. Sexual preferences. Uh, I'm asexual and demisexual, so I don't really have one. Most of the time, I flirt with a lot of people. I have a partner and a couple of very, de uh, de very devoted kink friends. For the sake of Dom's canon, his partners tend to be predominantly male, but Dom doesn't believe in gender discrimination. He will literally play with anyone who comes across his doorstep. It annoys me. I'm so sorry. I, I'm sorry. I am a mess today. It annoys me greatly when people on Twitter think that Dom is gay or think that Dom only flirts with guys or male presenting characters. That is not true. I um, don't have as many friends anymore that I used to um, who are female presenting, which is unfortunate. But Dom will play with literally anyone. I will get art with literally any friend that wants to get art with me. It doesn't matter if they uh, are male presenting or female presenting or non-binary or androgynous or anything really. Uh, I don't care about someone's gender identity. Um, Dom doesn't either. Dom is a very big proponent of the idea that you can identify however you please and he doesn't care about it. So please don't feel the myth that Dom is gay or that Dom only gets art with characters that are male or any of that because it's not true. Never has been. It just so happens that a lot of the characters that um, I am used to writing with are also male. Most of the friends that I have have male OCs. Um, I'm friends with a lot of people that really just are into the idea of like male lewdness that's just how it is but it doesn't mean that i don't care about female presenting characters or characters that are trans or anything like that it it just means that that's typically what my friends do also yeah like riku said i am like one of the biggest supporters of femdom ever it literally is my gateway kink to how i became a kinky person um, Femdom is one of my favorite things to write. I love writing it. In Dom's canon, there is a character by the name of Luna who pegs him on a pretty regular basis. So, yeah. 
I know this might come as surprising, but that that's the truth. Okay, um, moving on. Uh, designation is switch. I am a switch. Dom is a switch. Fetishes, many. Uh, leather, latex, puppy play, scent play, BDSM, armpits, boots, ar uh, anal whip whipping, spanking, stomping, crushing, rope, chain, sensory deprivation. There are so many fetishes, and Dom and I share the same ones equally. If you want to learn more about Dom's kinks, you can check out his F-list. Uh, I have an F-list on, um, online. Uh, F-list.net slash C slash Dominic Wolf is my F-list, and you can check out all of Dom's kinks there. Femdom gang, femdoms are I love. One of our first actual conversations we've talked about femdom. Yeah, I have a lot of, I have a couple of OCs that are actually femdoms. Um, the only reason why I don't really show them off as much is because a lot of my OCs I don't have art for, believe it or not. Um, I had a ton of OCs at one point in time and something deeply traumatic happened and I shelved them all and Dom is the only one that survived and that is why the person standing in front of you right now is a dog boy and not literally anything else. Um, and that's just kind of how I made my OCs. Now, that's not to say that you won't see depictions of other OCs. Like, I do have plans to get my other OCs uh, made art of. Um, a lot of them are into making Alpha, for example. Um, but we haven't gotten around to do that yet. So, you know, yeah. All right, uh, are you more dominant or more submissive? I get this all the time. So here's the answer. Good question. All switches tend to have a lean and Dom's no exception. I'm generally more submissive than not, but through streaming with Dom as my avatar, I've learned to lean a lot more into my dominant side. Most of the messages you'll see written from my content on Twitter, for example, will be written with a dominant tone. This is because my audience is primarily built up of submissive personalities. Uh, I switch depending on how I feel that day. Um, Every switch has their things. Some people switch depending on personalities. Some people switch depending on moods, how their day went at work, if they had a good day or not. Switching is so complicated and it gets boiled down so, so, um, it gets boiled down so much that people think that either you're more dominant or more submissive, but really what you actually are is you're like between both most of the time. Very rarely is there much of a moment where you feel like you're one or the other. And usually if you feel like you're one or the other, it's not for a long period of time. There are literally days where I've woken up and wanted to post stuff about my armpits, and then there are days the next day where I literally just want to be taken care of the entire day. That's just how it is. That's what being a Switch is. Um, and both Dom and I are switches, and you'll see this in most of Dom's, uh, most of the stories I write with Dom. He tends to have switch moods. Some scenes he'll be incredibly dominant, and then others he'll be incredibly submissive. That's just how it is. That's being a switch. That's just what it is. I'll be happy to draw your OCs for free. The quality will be far from beautiful, though, since my style is not realistic and more cartoony. I already have plans to um, to get my OCs drawn with Mel, actually. Uh, but that's, like, far down the road. I flip-flop through the day depending on our chats. Exactly. Yep, just like that. That's switching. That's what it is. I, in general, have been studying BDSM for approximately half my life. I was one of those kids growing up who was way too curious and indulged far too much on the internet, and before I knew it, I learned I really liked Femdom, which was my gateway into kink. As such, I know a lot about the scene. I'm a practitioner of BDSM as a dominant IRL, too, so a lot of my messages will be told from the perspective of a dominant. That said, I don't have a lot of experience in um, real life, so... A lot of the experience I have as a dom or as a sub mainly come from stories I've read or stories I've written. Uh, a lot of what I experience, I do vicariously through Dom, and also by talking to other people. So, just an FYI there. Are you shaven? Nope! Neither I nor Dom shave our privates or our armpits. Dom has a really visible treasure trail on his crotch, too. It's actually one of his favorite things to show off, and you'll see it in a lot of his outfits. In terms of dynamics, Dom doesn't allow his subs to have body hair. It's kind of a dominance thing for him to have body hair because he's heavily into musk play, 
So having the sub get off to his scent really turns it on. Uh, piercings, Dom's nipples are pierced. This is sometimes forgotten in some of his outfits. So if you see me forgetting it, please smack me. I do. Often. All the time. Tattoos. Dom has a paw print tattooed on his right ass cheek. It will be visible in quite a few outfits. This is also a detail I forget about sometimes, so please smack me if you see it missing. I forget about it. All the time. Underwear preferences. Dom's got his own brand in his canon, so he tends to wear wolf brand leather jocks. He's also fond of thongs, g-strings, freeballing, trunks, and more. I tend to be personally fond of briefs myself because of a couple of health issues. However, I am more than happy to rock jocks and trunks while streaming. I promise this is the end of the sexy stuff. Thanks for bearing with me. So just an FYI, if you muted the stream or if you averted your eyes from the stream, um, we are done with the sexual characteristics part of the stream, so you can tune back in. Thank you so much for, uh, for tolerating that. Today I learned Dom has nip piercings. I think we've talked about it before. Probably. Alright, now we're on to socials. Here are my socials. Uh, I have a Twitter. Twitter.com slash DommyWolfVT. I have a Discord. I'm not going to say that link out loud. YouTube is YouTube.com slash at DommyWolf. Twitch is twitch.tv slash DommyWolf. Joystick is joystick.tv slash u slash DommyWolfVT. Instagram, I have an Instagram, is instagram.com slash DommyWolfVT. Kofi is kofi.com slash DommyWolf. Throne is throne.me slash u slash DommyWolf. Streamloots is streamloots.com slash DommyWolf. Uh, my AO3, I'm DommyWolf on AO3. Not going to say that link out loud. It's too long. Um, Fansly is fansly.com slash DommyWolf, and ManyVids is manyvids.com slash DommyWolf. Alternatively, you can find all of my links at that thing there that just got linked. Mel just did it. There's all my guys. That's where you can find them. Special notes. I am dropping TikTok. Um, I have been experiencing... Uh, TikTok with Ebby um, for quite a few months. We've been trying TikTok, trying to figure out how TikTok works. I have no idea how TikTok works. I have learned that I will probably never figure it out. Um, not just because I don't want to, but also because I don't have time for TikTok. I'm literally not the type of person that sits in bed watching TikToks. I'm just not built that way. Um, so we're dropping TikTok. Uh, another thing is Instagram. I opened Instagram recently. I have quickly found out I don't understand Instagram at all. I think it's just a place to post pictures and I'm not a very big selfie person. I also don't really know how to take pictures of Dom with my phone. I take them with my computer. Uh, so I'm not going to give a lot of in uh, attention to Instagram anymore. Um, but you are more than welcome to follow me at any of these other places, and you will see my content. I post pretty much everything to Twitter. That's pretty much my main platform, much as I hate it. Um, and all of my commissions, my updates, my incoming streams, my stream notifications, etc., etc., all get posted to Twitter. So if you follow me on Twitter, chances are you're seeing everything. But how ironic not having time for the thing called TikTok. It's an potential one. Yeah, I don't get it. I don't get how people can just sit in bed and watch TikTok. I, I just, I'm not built that way. I don't know. Maybe I never have been. I was also not a big fan of those like Facebook lives or whatever that rolled out some odd 10 years ago. I don't know. I was never a fan. So just an FYI on that. If you follow me on TikTok, I really appreciate it, but I'm not going to give it much attention anymore. Uh, we're going to take most of what we post on TikTok to YouTube. Uh, I've really gotten into YouTube Shorts recently, so we're going to talk more about that later. I also dropped TikTok lately because transphobic content somehow always gets recommended to me. That is spooky. I don't like that. Very valid to drop it for that. 
All right, let's move on. And now we're going to talk about my content. <clears throat> my schedule is posted every Sunday on Twitter, but what does that schedule consist of? All right, let's talk about Twitch. Twitch is my main channel. Uh, it's my primary source of content and will be for the foreseeable future. Always kind of has been. Uh, for those of you who don't know much about my background, I have streamed on Twitch for, I believe, seven years now. Uh, most of those years were spent as a Final Fantasy XIV streamer. I streamed Final Fantasy XIV rating. I streamed Final Fantasy XIV casual content, new patches, me just fucking around in Final Fantasy XIV, and PvP. And that was primarily where I got my start on Twitch, was through Final Fantasy XIV. At some point in my life, I made the decision that I wanted to stream video games for people to watch um, that were not Final Fantasy XIV. And then I started streaming JRPGs. I use the term again. God damn it. Turn-based RPGs. <clears throat> and uh, it was there that I kind of sort of realized I actually liked that a lot. Um, I used to do it through the PS4, like many other streamers that got started um, streaming. They streamed through the PS4 streaming integration. Actually, I think it was PS3. I, I don't It was PS something. Insert a number. That's, that's what it was. Uh, PS something. And uh, I think the very first game I ever streamed on that platform was East 8, Black Ramosa of Dana. Um, and then I just moved on to other stuff after that. You kind of got me into watching streamers. Oh, well, that's good. I don't watch a lot myself, but uh, that's good. Oh, well, he wasn't streaming it when I met him, but he streamed other ideas, too. I wasn't a YouTuber. He wasn't a YouTuber. No, no. For a long time, I didn't even use my voice on streams. For a long time, I literally just put a game live on PS3, PS4, PS whatever, and I literally just played the game. I didn't talk at all. I was terrified of talking. And then when I moved towards more Final Fantasy XIV content, I talked because I had to, because I was raid leader, and you have to talk as a raid leader if things go bad. And eventually, uh, I made it into being a VTuber, and then I learned to use my voice a lot more. I used to hate my voice, but I've grown to like it uh, through content creation. Okay. Okay. Um, I'll be streaming on Twitch three days a week. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, typically using Saturday as a collab day. Lately, I have been trying to put all of my collabs on Saturday. There is nothing worse than me to me than coming home at work and knowing I'm going to disappoint someone. And I don't mean disappoint you, I mean disappoint my collab partners, because I either can't make it to the collab or don't have energy for it. So I'm trying to use Saturday as my collab day. If you want to collab with me, please try and put it on a Saturday. I am begging you to put it on a Saturday. I do collabs on other days, but Saturday is the easiest. Please put it on a Saturday. <laughs> Sundays are reserved for Dog Boy Sundays. We may still do solo streams on Sundays, but primarily this day is dedicated to that content. You can find out more about Dog Boy Sunday in the later slides. Subscribers to Twitch gain access to not just the subscriber section of my Discord, but also a super spicy Discord too. More details in the Discord slide. My overall goal on Twitch is to achieve 100 consistent subscribers. This will be a huge step towards becoming a full-time content creator and will really help me move away from being a hobby streamer. Uh, I don't talk about it a lot, but my goal in streaming is to eventually stream full-time. I would really like to do that. Um, I would like to be in a position where I can stream full-time, do content creation alongside my partner, and make uh, visual novels and also um, other things like zines and and uh, and audios and just just different kinds of content. Um, but that's pretty far off. A um, hundred consistent subscribers would really help. Your average Twitch streamer needs about three hundred to go full time. I don't know if I will ever make it to that point but I would like to be able to say that uh, I have enough subscribers that I can be comfortable in the fact that, you know, I'm doing something. 
if that makes sense. Also, the first time we hit 100 subscribers, uh, we are opening community days back up. Uh, we used to do community nights with Minecraft, but it got really chaotic, and there were a lot of people that used to participate that are no longer in the server, so it felt kind of weird. I want to open that back up. I would really like to create my own SMP that we play with the server and just use that for community night. So uh, that's my goal right now on Twitch is to obtain 100 subs so that we can open community night and then move on from there. Yeah, I guess it's 600 subs now. I think it used to be 300, but things have really changed. Let's talk about YouTube. Uh, YouTube is my secondary channel. For those of you who don't know that I have a YouTube, I have a YouTube. It's youtube.com slash at DommyWolf. I've been using it for about a couple of months now, so if you don't know about it, that's okay. Uh, it's not something that I've been using for long. Um, I stream on YouTube Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday each week. Uh, we recently reached 100 subscribers on YouTube. That's a big achievement for somebody who's only been fucking around on YouTube for about two to three months. Uh, thank you guys so much for do uh, for enjoying my content. I really appreciate that. Uh, in addition to live content, I'll also be doing video uploads each week in the following schedule. Uh, I'd like to do two edited highlight uh, VODs from Twitch. Um, those will mostly be random, just whatever I want to highlight that week. Uh, but from time to time, I might ask for polls just because sometimes I don't really know what to upload. Um, and I have a lot of VODs. By the way, I lost a lot of VODs because my computer was in the shop for about a week. I can't get those back. I don't know what games they were for. Uh, I also will be doing three edited shorts made from Twitch clips. Uh, I have actually gotten into making my own uh, videos. So like my own YouTube shorts and my own YouTube highlights. But my editors, um, Mel and Ebby, uh, we'll be helping with those as well. Um, Ebby uploads a lot of my videos to YouTube. Uh, so most of the time, if you see like, if you see something uploaded to YouTube during work day, that is most likely going to be Ebby. But I try and do some of my own if I can. There's like this past week I have not been able to, so I told Ebby to upload some. But yeah. Uh, my overall goal on YouTube is to be monetized. I don't know if you've taken a look at YouTube lately. It's incredibly hard to be monetized. You need a ton of watch hours and you need a lot of eyes on your content. I would say it's a little bit harder to be monetized on YouTube than on Twitch. However, YouTube's a lot of fun to play with. I actually really enjoy making videos. Um, I didn't think I was going to, but I do. It's a lot of fun for me to upload videos and just see how they do. Um, even if they don't do well, I have fun with the process. So, um, just an FYI on that. Being monetized on YouTube will be a big deal because even if I don't ever get to the point where I have enough subs on Twitch to make a living off of it, YouTube monetization is really good to, uh, to make a living off of as a content creator. And um, what that means, once you become YouTube monetized, is you have access to things like metrics and a team that can help you sort of direct your content. Um, I've been watching a lot of uh, YouTubers who are not VTubers on YouTube who have sort of changed my mind on content creation. Um, I personally think YouTube is a lot more geared towards people like me who don't necessarily care about fame or don't necessarily care about things like trends and whatnot. I like creating videos. I think it's fun. I love doing audios. And um, I, while I would love to be uh, self-sufficient on Twitch, um, I would also like to be monetized on YouTube. And if one of those things happen, I'll be happy. If both of them happen, that would be amazing. But, you know, we'll see how that happens. So yeah, that's the long and the short of YouTube. All right, Joystick. Uh, are you here for more of that good kinky Dommy content? Joystick has exactly what you need. I'll be streaming on Joystick every other Friday alongside Sheikah Husky for our Fetish Friday series. 
Um, for those of you who don't know what Fetish Friday is, Fetish Friday is a series that focuses on lewd games de decided by myself and Sheikah, but mainly their visual novels. Um, I'm always looking for more ways to improve Fetish Friday, so if you have any advice or suggestions, please let me know. Chica and I are kind of not terribly sure too much how to make this series lewd uh, because I think we rely a lot on our on the games themselves to make them lewd. Uh, Chica and I try and like do horny discussions and stuff like that, but sometimes they don't really hit right. Sometimes they do. Uh, also, Fetish Friday happens uh, at 11 p.m. on Fridays, and generally speaking, I'm really exhausted by that time. Um, but I think we have fun, and I think it's a good time. Um, I really like the community over on Joystick. I think uh, I think Joystick is a lot of fun to play with. Um, there's a lot of people that are simps on Joystick, which I think is cute, and being somebody who's really into, like, Findom, uh, I actually really enjoy that aspect of it. So... Um, I like the talking about BDSM. It's been nice and like asking people what they did that week and sharing. Yeah, I thought I thought so too. I would like to eventually write like a script for me to keep to, with regards to Fetish Friday at some point, just as a way of like directing the focus to talking about things. But uh, we'll do that eventually. Currently, I don't upload vods to Joystick. Instead, I upload my VODs to many vids. Uh, so if you ever want to look at my lewd VODs and stuff, I don't have too much on there right now. Um, but those will be on many vids. And the reason why is because Joystick's VOD system is a little weird. I don't like it that much. So I don't use it. Um, I would like to prioritize lewd streams more in the future for myself, too. I used to do a lot of, uh, like, I played full service by myself on Joystick for a while. And that was really fun. Uh, and I also did a lot of lewd Sims 4 streams, which I would love to continue. Um, the reason why I haven't done too much lewd content by myself is because, one, it's hard to fit in to my schedule. It probably doesn't need to be, but it is. Um, and two, it just doesn't appear that me doing lewd content as much does very well. Um, which is okay. I mean, there are some people that don't really want to see that kind of thing, but it kind of makes me sad because I love doing it. Um, so when I see that it like doesn't really go that great, it makes me feel kind of bad about liking it, but that's just like a anxiety thing. It's not anything to do with anybody. My overall goal for Joystick is to attain a consistent viewer average of 20 viewers, and once we hit this, we'll be using lewd models. And you will see those later on in this presentation. Fansly. Fansly is my newest undertaking. I just joined it last month. If you didn't know I have a Fansly, I have a Fansly now. It's fansly.com slash dominable. Uh, fansly will be primarily where I experience with lewd audio recordings. Is that supposed to say experiment? as experience it's supposed to say experiment these will be voted on periodically by subscribers in my community discord i think i'd like to do a voted audio every month where you guys vote on your audio selection and i'd like to do a scripted one where i just do my own thing every month so two audios a month i think sounds good um I have a lot of fun making audios. Um, in fact, I've enjoyed it so much that I put some throne content on my throne that will help me make audios. I put like a microphone and I put like a microphone arm and stuff like that on my throne um, for people that want to help me get better at audios. I would love to have a mic just dedicated to audio experiences. I think that would be really cool. I don't have one right now. I record all my audios with my headset. Eventually, uh, there may be even more virtual Dami content, JOI videos, BDSM panels, and more. I'm always open to suggestions on how to use this new platform, so please feel free to drop them on me. Uh, a lot of my stumbling bro blocks as a creator is I feel like I don't really have much of a lewd platform, even though I want to. And I, part of that is because I don't really know how to make one. Like, lewd games are really hard to find. 
uh, especially on Twitch. Sorry, on, especially on Steam. Um, and itch.io, while it has a lot of lewd games on there, it's really hard to determine their quali uh, quality and whether or not they are offensive. For some reason, there are a lot of transphobic lewd games out there, which is very weird. Um, that said, I really enjoy making lewd content, even if I have to write it myself. Part of the reason why I got into audios as opposed to doing lewd streams is just because I feel like it's a lot easier to be lewd with audios than it is to find like games on Steam that I can like depend on that aren't going to be offensive. And also because I really like writing scripts. Uh, I really didn't think I was going to enjoy this, but I did. And it's something I want to do more of. So I'd like to try and do two audios a month. Um, I think the voted audio is probably going to be at the start of every month. And then my personal audio that I'm going to be scripting will be like at the end of every month. And these will be uploaded to Fansly. Um, all of the audios will be available to Fansly subscribers. But otherwise, I'm going to be charging them individually. If you aren't going, if you aren't interested in subscribing, I'm thinking like five dollars per audio is probably fair. Uh, but I don't know a lot about Fansly, so if you do know a lot about Fansly, let me know if you have any suggestions, and I am more than open to receiving them. <coughs> Ninety percent of lewd games are visual novels with boring text. I just want to masturbate, not to read about freaking War and Peace. Oh, I don't have a problem with that. I have a problem when they're about like things like rape and things that I don't want to show to my audience. That's when I have a problem with it. I love stories about... Well, I mean, I I, I love um, sex with stories. That's what To Make an Alpha is. So, I have no problem with that. Alright, let's move on. What the fuck happened? Hold on. Twitter! The bane of my existence. Twitter is my main interaction platform. Fortunately, it also happens to be the bane of my existence. Every Sunday on Twitter, I'll be posting a new schedule and thumbnails for games made by me. I make all my own thumbnails now, by the way. For a while, Mel made them. I make them all myself now. So all of these dummy poses and stuff like that, like this one you see in front of me, I made that myself in doll play. Um, so if you have suggestions for thumbnail poses and things like that, let me know and I will try my best to emulate them in doll play. I will also be posting all of my art commissions and more on Twitter, too. If you want to see what's going on with your Dommy Doberman, check in, or just get a quick Dommy fix, Twitter is the best place for that. I post on Twitter constantly. I should not post on Twitter constantly, but I do. Um, it's usually very horny. So, you know, just an FYI. The story setup makes those sex scenes mean more. The power of setup and contrast. Agreed. Huge agree. Context is everything for sure. For me, slow burn is great. Yep, agreed. And now we come to Discord. Discord is my primary uh, primary community interaction. Um, we fostered a very friendly, accepting, and kink positive community, and I'm very proud of that. We have over about 270 members now on the Discord. That's crazy because at one point in time we barely had 100. Uh, so thank you guys so much for being a member of the Discord. I hope that it's a place that you enjoy uh, interacting in. I am fiercely protective of my Discord server, but please don't be afraid to join. Uh, I would love to see it grow to reach at least 350 members and become fu fully boosted. Uh, we have role icons that we're trying to implement, um, because you can do that once you get to a f uh, boost, certain boost point in, on Discord. Uh, and I would really love to keep those. Once we reach 100 Twitch subs, I'll be resuming Community Nights. The details for this will be announced at a later date. Oh? And what's this? For becoming a subscriber to my Twitch channel, it would also seem you have access to a special new benefit. Caveat here. We have not finished this. Um, it will probably be released tonight. But for what you're about to hear, is not done yet. It is in process of being done.
introducing a brand new server to interact with all my subscribing subbies. Dommy's Mansion will be the After Dark version of Dommy's Dungeon. Here you can interact with me more personally, foster a lewd community focused on Dom sub interactions, have private sessions with me, and more. If you're interested in getting to know your Doberman Dominant on a more one-on-one -on -one basis, please consider subscribing and joining. I'll do my best to please you. Um, it's hard to explain this right now because it's not open yet. But basically what this is, is it's kind of, sort of, my own... How do I word this? Um, okay. It's kind of a simp server slash roleplay server. Um, there are going to be rooms for roleplaying. There's going to be rooms for simping. Uh, there's going to be some hardcore play rooms. So like discussions about hardcore kink, etc, etc. I have a room that's pretty much just focused around posting humiliating posts. So like people can dump stuff in there and I'll like react. I'll like let you guys react to it or like uh maybe something humiliating happens during a session and one of my subs likes that so i'll post it in there um i will also be doing doming sessions in there uh they probably won't be very long on average probably about maybe 20 25 minutes but i will have rooms where i dom my submissives um, so if that's something you're interested in, that is something you have access to as a subscriber once we get it up and running. Uh, just an FYI, just because you're a member of this server does not mean that you are a personal submissive or anything like that. These are open interactions that I have with my community in a trusting, consensual way. Um, so if you plan on joining this server and think that I'm going to collar you or whatever, please don't make it weird. Um, because this is not really what that's about. This is more about like role playing or like quick sessions, things like that. It's basically an ERP server. <laughs> so if you're cool with that, and if you know your boundaries, and if you don't plan on getting creepy with it, I, I invite you to join and we can have a lot of fun together. I'm really looking forward to seeing how this works out. I think it'll be a lot of fun. Um, I think it'll be a great way to accentuate my lewd platform. And I think it'll be a lot of, in, uh, I think it'll provide a lot of enjoyment to you guys. So yeah, I will let you know when that's up and running. Hopefully it'll be tonight. If it's not tonight, we will get it up and running here in the new future. Hi subbies, uh, Dommy here. I am editing the anniversary video. I wanted to take a brief moment to talk about the Dommy's Mansion Discord that we talked about on the anniversary stream on Sunday. Um, so the expectation was we were going to try and get that finished up um, that evening, but it seems like we may have bit off a bit more than we can chew with that. And um, considering it's almost the end of March and Mel has to focus on getting her rent first and foremost, and I am just absolutely exhausted this week from how much of a trial uh, last week was, we think that that might actually take a little bit more time. Um, I didn't want to like let anyone hang around and like wait for this or like think that it's still coming today or tomorrow uh it seems like it'll actually be coming on sunday or monday we're gonna try and take um sunday to work on it so if you are passionate about the dommy's mansion part of the subscriber benefits i'm so happy to hear that because i'm really excited for it too it'll i think it'll be my very first um actual lewd benefit that I can offer to my subscribers, but you will have to wait just a little bit longer. And for those of you who are asking about the right for me content, that will definitely be in there. I do have plans to implement it. I just ask you to be a little bit patient with us as we are working on this. This is something that we are doing that's completely new. Um, it is something we are excited about, but it is going to take a little bit more time to work out the kinks, you know. 
your kinks. But yeah. Anyway, uh, I didn't want to leave you hanging. I just wanted to let you know. So yeah, uh, enjoy the rest of the video. All right. Little private ERP with Dommy and special ERPs, events, tasks, group tasks, etc. Lots of really nice ideas, and I am pumped. Yes. Um, so some of you might remember I did a poll a while back for Write for Me. Um, the plan is that for the members of that server and individuals that want to participate, I'll be posting a daily prompt for you guys to write. And if you complete it, I'll be praising you. And if you don't complete it, I'll be giving you a punishment. And I'm I mean, since it's roleplay, you don't have to do the punishment. But if you're into that, uh, I would like for you to. So, there you go. Alright. Glad we were able to talk about that. I had no idea what to say about it because it wasn't finished. And that brings us to Stream Loots. Stream Loots is something that I've been trying to push more on this channel. I think Stream Loots is a lot of fun. I made a video about it on YouTube. I don't think a whole lot of people saw it. Um, basically, Stream Loots is a way for you to interact with me on a more personal level. You can ask me questions. You can play cards during streams, which affect my gameplay. Uh, there's like things like you can suggest my next commission on Stream Loots. Um, you can give me commission ideas on Stream Loots. You can... There's all sorts of things you can do on Stream Loots, and I've really been trying to add more and more cards to it to make it more interesting, but I feel like people just aren't as interested in it, so I did want to take a moment to talk about it. Um, I, I, I have Stream Loots enabled for almost every stream with the exception of Collabs, and the reason for that is because it makes Collabs a little bit dicey and weird, and and it's, it's just kind of strange to hear somebody doing like audience interactions while they're also collabing with someone, and it just creates a mess. So I don't have them enabled for collabs, but on solo streams, Stream Loots is actually enabled. This is a running deal. For every five pack card packs you buy on streamloots.com slash Domiwolf, you can get a special voice message from me. Uh, these are short voice messages, like maybe 10 to 20 seconds long. Um, but if you want me to say something uh, like, humiliating to you or like praise you or thank you personally uh i am more than happy to do that for every five packs that you purchase on stream loops all you have to do is dm me letting me know that you did it and let me know what voice message you want to hear and uh i will record it for you and post it and if you want me to post it publicly i will so just to let you know that's a thing that i have running all right we are now at the lore discussions. So if you're interested in Dom's lore or want to know more about Dom, this is the segment for you. All right, who is Dominic Wolf? My OC. This lovely art was done by Blondes, uh, featuring quite a few of Dom's outfits. <clears throat> Dom is a 21-year-old scion who's been disinherited from the wolf family legacy and has gone into hiding on the outskirts of Canis. Uh, he primarily functions as a mercenary contracted with the Canis Vanguard Charter, an organization which serves the Church of Ortis as a task force to keep Canis City and the larger country of Canis safe. He also creates loot content on Only Wands, functions as a leather and latex model for Wolf Magazine, and maintains status as a fetish performer and the owner of the Princess Room. Dominic is a great sword wielder, with no magical affinity whatsoever, though he can make use of dark energy in his duties because his job as a mercenary is expected to Dark Knight. That's a carryover from Final Fantasy XIV, I just kind of decided to add it into most of his other canons. He wields a sword entitled the Vanguard Blade, a long, terrifying crystalline sword which looks like a jagged blade of purified salt, able to be tempered with dark energy and used to create shockwaves and sickle-like blades. Mostly, though, He's a dominant submissive and performs online playing video games and dominating partners as they approach. Dominic has a number of play partners and associates, including a companion by the name of Pup. Pup, a being made of liquid latex and subsisting off of Doberman milk, is one of Dominic's many obedient faithful playmates and primarily serves as a means for my audience to connect more to my content. Dominic also does plenty of training with his dominant Jin. Jin is Dominic's mercenary leader and serves as his primary trainer for most of his missions. Outside of work, 
Jin and Dom also practice BDSM, and Dom's Jin's loyal submissive. Now we're going to talk about something else. Uh, I've mentioned the name to make an alpha a couple of times during this presentation, and if you're not familiar with my content, uh, you might be wondering, what is that? What is to make an alpha? Let's talk about it. To make an alpha is a story st started by me in 2021 featuring Defector Dami, hereby known as Red Dami, and his partner Turtle's relationship while detailing the overall politics of the country of Canis. It is largely a lewd piece focusing on BDSM, but also has themes of action and mystery as well. Currently, all of To Make an Alpha is hosted on Archive of Our Own. We have plans one day to make it into other things, but for right now, it is a story on AO3. To Make an Alpha will be resuming, we just have to create concepts for all the boys and other characters first. The reason for this is To Make an Alpha was originally a one-shot commission piece that quickly developed into something more popular, so I would like to completely redo the world building I did and make it more consistent. To Make an Alpha is also kind of how Mel and I met. Now let's talk about Dog Boy Sunday. Dog Boy Sunday is a uh, is an event where Red, Dommy, and Turtle uh, play games together every Sunday at 4 o'clock p.m. Eastern on Twitch. This is a collaboration event where Turtle and I play games together. I just said that, and I don't know why I read it out loud. This event is focused around showcasing JRPGs, featuring specially made outfits, models, and graphics oriented around whatever game we're playing at the time. There may also be one day, uh, uh, there will also one day be a loot addition to this, where Turtle and I play looter games on Joystick 2. Look forward to that. Um, right now, the game that we're playing on Dog Boy Sundays is Chrono Cross. Uh, Turtle and I switch each time, um, deciding what game to play before Chrono Cross. I had told Turtle to pl Turtle to play Crash Bandicoot, and after Chrono Cross, we'll see what comes next. But that is Dog Boy Sunday. That happens every Sunday at 4 o'clock p.m. Eastern. Uh, it has always been the most popular event on my channel. We used to play Valheim a lot. Those streams would get a lot of viewers. Um, we've also played Hollow Knight. We've played Ori. We've played... Uh, we've played American Truck Simulator. There's all kinds of games that we've played on this, on this event. Uh, so I hope that you will consider coming by and giving it a look-see. And now we've entered the discussion segment of the stream. So, let's talk about some of our future outfits. You can see some of them here. <clears throat> so, what outfits do we have in mind for the future? There are quite a lot of ideas that we have that we have not made into models. Some of them include the streetwear Dommy outfit, which you saw in the previous slide. Uh, we have an outfit that is basically a latex bodysuit fashioned more in a techwear form, which we call dog armor. Uh, we have a couple of, I of ideas for that. It's going to be a kink outfit. Um, we have casual wear Dommy, who was featured in the previous slide. Uh, we have... Uh, Mercenary Dommy featured in the Who Is slide. That's the outfit with the coat and the titties out. Um, we have the loot outfits, which were featured in the previous slide. Those have kind of been in concept for a while. Uh, we haven't made them yet, just because I don't really do enough loot content or loot streams to justify them. But uh, maybe somewhere down the line coming soon, you might see those. We have the 2.0 version of my Prison Dominant outfit, which was my debut outfit. Some of you might remember that. We will be making a new version of it. Uh, there's going to be a new maid outfit and probably a new maid, out maid event to go with that. You guys really liked the maid event that we did last time. Um, I would like to do another one. I actually had the idea to have the maid outfit made for Mel's uh, birthday last year, um, but we weren't able to get that arranged. So, uh, who knows where you'll see the maid outfit this year. Uh, there will be a Halloween Dami 2.0. Last year we did a vote and you guys wanted to do Fall Dami. Uh, so this year we might remake Halloween Dami. 
Uh, there will be a leather Santa version of Dami, which will be non-denominational. It will reference the fictional holiday of Borkmas, which exists in the To Make an Alpha uh, universe. You know, I was intimidated at trying to do some Dami arts because I wasn't sure on the outfit, but now I'm getting a real sense of for his slash your general style preference. Thank you. I have a lot of different outfits. Uh, one of the things that I've always loved getting done as a commissioner of art is to get new outfits. I usually always ask my artists to put Dom in whatever outfit they please. And sometimes they ask me to come up with one or sometimes they just come up with one themselves. And I just really like to see what they come up with for my OC. Uh, where was I? Right, yes. Um, and then we have a redesign for Dom's mercenary outfit, which is the outfit in the background here. Uh, for many, many, many years, Dom's mercenary outfit has been that coat outfit um, that you guys have seen uh, through this slide and some other places. Uh, Heikite actually redesigned that recently um, to fit more of a uh, more of a punk uh, punk slash grunge vibe, and I really, really love this outfit. So there will be a model of it one day. Uh, we have a Detective Dami outfit that we've talked about that Heikate designed. Um, there's 2.0 of Cow Dami. Uh, we're going to bring back the Cow outfit. There's probably going to be an event around that. I would love to see an event around that. Um, we have Dami in a suit uh, is planned as well. We've had that concepted for a while and just haven't been able to make it yet. Uh, we have Spring Dami 2.0. You guys really love that outfit, and we would love to make a new version of it. Mel wants to change it up quite a bit because we feel like it sort of stands out as not really fitting Dom's brand too much. Um, we have Summer Dami, which is the outfit that you saw in one of the previous slides with the fishnet over the chest and the, uh, the fishnet on the legs. It's a very... It was for a long time, I think it might still be my, uh, no, no, no. It was for a long time my YouTube banner, actually. Uh, a picture of Mel and I eating popsicles together. We would love to make that outfit into a 2.0 outfit, so please uh, look forward to that. And we have a lot of different outfit designs in store for Red Dami. Uh, I can't too talk too much about those because we don't have a whole lot of concepts for them. But please know that we are also looking forward to adding more outfits to Red Dommies um, wardrobe too. All right, it's time for the question and answer segment. So I have a couple of questions that were given to me before this stream to answer. And if you have any questions while in chat, you are more than welcome to provide them to me as well. Uh, just feel free to ask them in the chat box. All right, first question. Besides Dobermans and Sheebs, what other dog breeds do you like? There are a lot of dog breeds that I like. I think I like pretty much every dog. Um, some of my favorites are Dobermans, Shiba Inus, I love Samoyeds, uh, I think Dalmatians are adorable. Um, love Huskies, I grew up with uh, a couple of neighbors that had Huskies. I've always adored Huskies. Um, I, like Dash I like Dachshunds just because they look ridiculous. Uh, there were a couple of Dachshunds in another neighborhood that I grew up in. I always thought they were kind of funny looking because they look like hot dogs. Um, let's see, what else do we have? Uh, Pomeranians. Big fan of Pomeranians. Love Pomeranians. Um, I think they are adorable. Um, and Golden Retrievers. Uh, Golden Retriever is a classic. I grew up watching all the Air Bud movies. Um, I really, really, really loved uh, those movies, um, and I love Golden Retrievers, and uh, of course there are German Shepherds. Um, part of me growing up, I lived in a, uh, I lived in a fairly, um, I lived in a fairly uh, diverse neighborhood. Um, there weren't a whole lot of German Shepherds, but there, but there were one or one or two that we would see from time to time. Um, and I really love, uh, I really love how tough German Shepherds look. They're very nice. Borzois. I have a Borzoi OC, uh, OC thanks to Mel. Um, I love Borzois. I love Bo. Uh, Borzois are just nice little, they look like ghosts, and I think that's really adorable. That's 10 dogs. That's 10. 10 
dogs. What meme is that? I don't know what meme that is. Let me do it for you. I don't know it. You'll have to link it to me. Pugs. Yes, I like pugs. Um, I think pugs are snotty little brats and they are very cute. I think the only dogs I really have experience with is labs. Love labs. Uh, chocolate labs are very adorable. Um, black labs too. Um, we have a lot of dog ideas, okay? A lot of the OCs that are in the works for To Make an Alpha are dog OCs. I am always thinking about new dog OCs. Trust me. Um, so I think the only good answer to this question is there's not really a limit. I like a lot of dogs. I didn't even get to St. Bernard's yet. I watched Beethoven as a kid. I've always loved St. Bernard's since then. Um... So yeah, there we go. Dogs. There's a lot of those that I like. Um, what is Dommy's favorite hobby other than his job? Dom loves to write. Um, he writes a lot. Uh, most of them are lewd fantasy stories. Um, but he likes to write mysteries as well. Uh, he doesn't do it very often because most of the time he spends with his, uh, with his playmates or his boys. Um, and, uh, when he's not doing that, he's usually watching TV or passed out on the couch, but when he can do it, he likes to write. Um, he's never post, he's never like published a story or anything like that. Most of it is creative writing, but he does enjoy writing and he considers JRPGs, uh, turn-based RPGs, a, uh, huge inspiration of his writing. What's your favorite part of content creation? My favorite part of content creation is introducing uh, people that watch my channel to games they may nev not have heard of before or games they may have never given a chance. Um, I am very big. Uh, I'm a very big fond of indie. I'm a very big fan of indie games. Um, a lot of indie games that I play people have never heard of or they may have seen but like they don't know anything about. Uh, one of my favorite things to do is to start playing a game and then someone come in and they get curious about it or they come out of the stream liking the game and that makes me feel like I did a, a good job of showing it to them because I've always loved indie games or games that fly under the radar. Um, I grew up playing games that nobody knew about or games that um, I only knew about because I was the only one in the niche. There used to be a lot of turn-based RPGs on the PS2, for example, that nobody had any idea existed just because they weren't given publicity. And that's kind of been a trend in turn-based RPGs ever since I was a kid. Um, so I like when people come into stream and they say, I don't know this game, or I like this game, or this game seems cool, and they've never heard of it before, because I like introducing people to new games. Um, it's something that I really enjoy. If you had a dream collab, who would be a part of it? This question was asked to me, and I'm pretty sure it was asked by somebody who is hoping that I, like, mention or name drop big streamers or something. I don't particularly look up to anybody in this community. Um, sorry to say that. I used to have role models and idols and stuff like that. I don't anymore. I've come to learn that big streamers are problematic uh, a lot of the time. And I just don't... I don't really have an answer uh, to that. Um, it would be fun to do a... It'd be fun to do a collab, like a visual novel collab, where everybody reads different characters, but I would want to do it with friends. I, I would never hold auditions for it or ask random people I don't know uh, to participate in it. I would want to ask my friends. 
So that's my answer to that. I'm sorry if it's disappointing. Um, I don't look up to any VTubers. I respect very few VTubers. Um, there's no, like, idol in Hollow Live or V Shoujo or Niji Sanji that I particularly care about. I mute all kinds of v big VTubers. I've blocked plenty of them. Um, indie VTubers, I just don't look up to anybody in that community. Um, I've been treated badly by a lot of bigger creators in the indie scene, so I just don't care about them very much. And I don't really have time to watch streams. Um, so sorry, that's that's my answer to the, that's my that's my answer. I, I just I don't really have anybody um, other than my friends. So there you go. What inspired you to be a VTuber? My VTuber inspiration was my partner. Um, when Mel and I first met, not too long ago, not too long after we uh, got to know each other, she started talking to me about. Um, about uh, VTubing and asked me why I don't do it. And the answer I had when she asked me that question was, I don't know what that is. Um, at the time when I was in the knowledge of VTubers, they were creators like, I can't remember the names now. Uh, they were all big people. Uh, they were just all big creators I didn't know anything about them. Um, I didn't have a very good opinion of them either because I heard that VTubers could be problematic, which, you know, called that one on the head, didn't I? Um, so I told her I never really thought about it. Um, and she showed me some clips and talked to me about VTubing. And we had a pretty serious discussion about it. And she offered to make me my first model. At first, I didn't really know if it would be something I would be interested in. I really didn't know if I would like using a model to stream. I was very afraid that my voice coming out of Dom would not fit. But I liked watching her make the model. I loved seeing Dom come to life while she was creating him in Vroid. And... The first time I went live with Dom as a model, I started to realize maybe there's something to this. Maybe this is something that I really want to do. And it kind of grew from there. Um, for the first six months of my VTubing career, uh, the people who inspired me to continue were the people around me. Um, I spent a lot of time uplifting others. Uh, primarily on Twitter. Uh, I promoted streams. I would open Twitch and have like th 13 tabs open a day. I was constantly networking and trying to meet people. I was a member of so many servers. My belief was, as a VTuber, it was a small community of creators that were trying to succeed together. That was what I thought. I found out, not too far in, that was not the case. I spent a lot of time on other people that I should have spent on myself, uh, improving my streams, improving my goals, just bettering myself as a content creator. When I thought the idea of VTubing was to help lift others up so that they can lift you up as well. It is not. So. That, in a nutshell, is what inspired me. A lot of the inspiration that I got from the people that I used to know, uh, I do appreciate because it made me into who I am today even the bad experiences. Um, but my inspiration primarily is my partner. So there you go. There you have it.
Are there any other questions before we end the question and answer segment? Does anyone have any other questions? It was a lot nicer back then. I remember you were so scared of your voice, and now I can't imagine any other voice for him. Aw, thank you. What a nice story. I love you guys. <laughs> thank you. I had already associated your voice with Dom, so it was natural for me. Interesting. I always associated Dom's voice with the character in Final Fantasy XIV. Aw, thank you, Abby. I think there was question. Was there? Is there an AU where Dom would be a different dog breed like Tibetan? No. Um, no. The reason why is because before Dom's identity really came into being, I asked a lot of people what kind of dog they thought I would be. And a lot of them answered Doberman. So I've always associated myself with that identity. Um... I grew up thinking that Dobermans are guard dogs. Um, and that's kind of how I envisioned Dom. That's kind of like how I crafted his personality is to be a guard dog. So it's hard for me to envision him as anything other than a Doberman just because it seems to be what fits him so well. And Doberman's aesthetics also fit Dom. So I can't really see him as anything else. Since Dom is Doberman, is his ears cut? So I'm going to say no, because his ears are not... Uh... Dom's ears are wolf ears. They are not Doberman ears. <clears throat> Dobermans are perfect because they're shiny like all your clothes. So glad you have a giant fluffy tail though. Yeah, the tail was designed by Mel. Um, Dom's always had a really fluffy tail just because I like that idea of uh, a dog boy having a really fluffy tail. But I never really knew what I wanted it to look like until Mel designed it. And um, and it's kind of something I've gotten very attached to. So, to answer your question, Evie, um, I didn't actually know anything about Doberman ear cutting when I created Dom. Because most of the Dobermans that I based Dom um, off of uh, were Dobermans that I'd met just in real life. But I didn't know anything about their ears being cut because I've never owned one. So... Yeah. Um, no. No, his ears not. His ears are not cut. Yeah, once I learned that, I was kind of surprised. I... I didn't really know about that. I think if I had known about it when I created Dom, maybe I would have implemented it in his design, but Dom's ears have always been wolf-like, and his tail has always been wolf-like. Um, so I I just don't... Yeah, I don't have that. I don't have that in my uh, in my character design. Um, How did you get so fine? I mean, you made me. You answer that question. All right, uh, do we have any other questions in the question and answer segment? You made you, I just put it alive. No, you made the, I mean, well, the idea existed, but you know, the model you made. Unless they are legitimately doing a job where it could be a problem, animals should never have their ears, tails docked. I didn't know that was done with other animals either. I, maybe I just don't know very much about dog ownership. I haven't owned too many dogs in my lifetime, but I've always loved dogs. Okay, how about this AU idea? Dommy with floppy ears. 
He has floppy ears in his uh, modern canon. Um, he wears floppy dog ears as a pup. Oh, true, but I meant for your ears. I can see it. I can see it. I, I can see him having floppy ears. Um, it's hard to visualize in my head, but I can see it. Fluffy, fluff, uh, fluffy, floppy ear dommy running laps at the gym, bouncing. Literally accurate Doberman dommy. Yeah, I can see it. Why are you such a good boy? Uh, I don't know. People tell me that, even though I feel like I don't do very much most of the time. You tell me why I'm such a good boy. You're the one saying I'm a good boy. What did I do that was good? <laughs> oh, you have a list. And what's that list? You're kind, supportive, and funny. Aww. Thank you. Hard worker. Smells nice. Thank you. I try on some of those things. Lovely friend, does his tasks. Now I need good boy slide. I'll have to remember that for the next presentation, including a slide that is just reasons that I'm a good boy. <laughs> all right. I think that rounds it out. I think those are all the questions. Um, if you have any other questions, I will definitely answer them, but I think that's it. means that's the end of our PowerPoint presentation. All right. Thank you guys for watching that. I hope that you enjoyed getting to know me. Um, if it was your first time meeting me, I hope that you enjoyed what you learned. Um, and if it's not your first time meeting me, thank you so much for sitting through the presentation because I feel like it's important for people to get to know me if they don't know me. I'll, um, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you came to the presentation and just wanted to watch it again, I hope you enjoyed all the fun bits and the things I experimented with here um, just to make it more interesting, more enjoyable. Um, some of these ideas came last minute, so if they didn't do so well, I'm not the one that had them, someone else did. <coughs> but anyway, um, I do really enjoy the time that you've spent here today uh, watching this, and I hope that you will um, also watch the uh, the beginning I did of Resident Evil 4, which will be coming in the following days. Make sure that if you want to check me out or check any of my content out, that you visit me at twitch.tv slash dommywolf or youtube.com slash at dommywolf where you're watching this video right now. Um, I also have a Discord community, which you can find in the comments. Thank you so much for your time. I hope that you have a good rest of your day. And if you like this video, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe so that you can see more of my videos in the future. Bye, subbies.